what happened down there when we played them in um, Fort Myers and, and how good this team was to come in and, and really put ourselves in a position to win the basketball game. Um, there was just a stretch in the second half uh, where we broke down. We, we really did defensively and it really, really cost us and it wasn't them, it was us simply adhering to fundamentals um, and it, that was the stretch that cost us the game. Dave, how much down the stretch, maybe in the last nine, ten minutes, did their length, you think, bother you on the other end of the floor? Because you got, you got in a rhythm there making threes, and then you missed a bunch of threes, and then guys stopped attacking at times. How, how much was that maybe a factor? It, it is all night, and it just happened that um, for whatever, maybe we were a little tired. We, we weren't cutting. We had guys starting to stand, and, and that, if you're not spaced, you just allow them to use their length even more effectively, and you tie up the basket, and you do things like that. And fatigue factor got us. It really did. It really, really did. We didn't go deep in the second half. It's probably my fault. But with a possession game, I thought it was it was best to go short bench. And those guys, we had, we were going to rely on the upperclassmen. And so, obviously. Um I mean, this is not a moral thing, Dave, but I mean, you, you, you play a lot of people close in this league, a lot of good teams. Does it continue to tell you? I mean, you won games too, but does it tell you how close you are? I mean, this is the best team in the league, arguably. Well, if this whole team was coming back next year, then, yeah. then we're close and had a few pieces, but then we got to, you know, we, we lose a lot of good kids, upperclassmen that have been. And the, the thing that these kids have been, Ethan and, and Stretch and Bear and, and Chad, what they've been through is. The environments of Bellarmine, Kentucky, Wells, and Southern Indiana, Quincy, those are hostile environments in college basketball. They've played in conference championships. They've played in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, they're not going to be phased by anything. So to say we're close, well, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you on that point. But the, the kids that are sitting underneath them haven't been through those environments yet and battle-tested that way. Um, but again, these these guys aren't interested in moral victories. Once they figured out we can win, they they, they understand and they they're trying to win every game. Um, so with that, am I proud of them? Absolutely, Dave. Because like I said, this team beat Miami, and they're number one in the ACC and they're pretty big on good ball club. So Brown didn't didn't get you. Thompson did. I mean, is that just a, a team that's got a lot more weapons than a lot of people you face in this league. It's two, three, four different guys that can get you. Well, you look in, anybody they put in the game is capable of scoring double figures. Anybody they put in the game is capable of doing that. Uh, the kid that, you know, we really couldn't afford to let happen, and he had his whole West Virginia fan base here tonight. Phil, I mean, that was his homecoming, and he really was. And he just, he had a great game. I think when they were up two, the ball banks off the backboard. And when he was on the baseline, shot the mid-range jumper from the baseline, short corner, it actually banked off the side of the backboard and went in for him, and that's the kind of night he had. Even when you're on the floor, I mean, you, like, you guys did struggle for a long time tonight shooting threes, and I think it was four straight possessions that you made threes, and down the stretch you did. How much does it feel as a player that, okay, now we're getting on a roll, you got a, you got a couple looks yourself, how much does it, does it feel like I, any of us could start shooting and unfortunately didn't go in down the stretch? Well, we went on a stretch where we was making awesome. shots because, because we was cutting and we was moving hard and, and we got great looks. And for the most part, I thought we got really good looks all night. And then, uh, and then but, the, but the, uh, the fact that you, you start making shots and then go down the other end and you give up offensive rebounds after you have great stops. I mean, they, looked, they shot 44% from the field, but I would, I would say that they shot under 40 on the first shot attempt. It seemed like every time that uh, we gave up an offensive rebound, they made a big basket. Ethan, you're a junkie. Did you watch Miami last night? And did it make you know that this is a team that, that, that beat them and, and looking forward to something like this? I watched bits and pieces of the game, flipping back and forth between Duke and North Carolina. But, you know, they are they're a really good basketball team. And uh, we had to come in and we had to play really well. We had to, we had to play like we did against Mercer to beat them tonight. And for probably 35 minutes, we did that. And uh, we, went on, we went on a little laugh where we gave up offensive rebounds and it cost us a game.